What's good, everybody? We're back with another episode of In The Chair. I am your host, Saint B. Chopping. We got that boy, Jay Strives, right here. Uh, what you got to say to the camera real quick, Dog? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to get a, a nice fade, because I always do it myself, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm excited to get out the house. You got me out the house, man. Already, man. My, so uh, my wife let me out the house. That's what's up. So first things first, what we doing, man? I always, you know, got to start off with what type of haircut we doing. Just skin, let me know. Skin fade, skin fade. Skin uh, fade. Medium to, you know, medium to high. Okay. I know I got a little weight. All Maybe right. a little scissors. Uh, we're leaving the length on top. You but want yeah, to yeah, top? yeah. Just line it up okay. in the front. Gotcha. And uh, I'm cool. All right, let's I'm not get it. picky. First question though. Since you're from New York, uh huh. Blue cheese around nah. your buckle. Blue cheese. Wow. Oh, man. We're All right. About this, man. Blue cheese. My wife, she she, she does ranch. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I try telling them if you're, if you're like from Western New York, you buffalo all day. Okay. Uh, buffalo with buffalo. Uh, blue cheese with buffalo wings. Yeah. If, you, if you're from like Western New York, and uh, he posted it on Instagram and. It's a and good. Like, I, I had a mixture. No, I had like 20 people say. Blue it's a cheese. good debate, but uh, I'm a blue cheese. I'm blue cheese, even right. with my pizza. With your pizza? Yeah. Oh, man. It's, I don't know. I just got to. Well, it's not crazy. I mean, you can you said. Uh, Wait, so is everybody top? ranch in here? Nah. Nah, nah, nah. I, I, I do I ranch, but. I don't eat anything with my wings. I like wings. But if I was going to do, it's blue, blue cheese. Okay, okay. Uh, we said we're leaving the link, right? Yeah, yeah, but if you can, bro, I need a little love with, like, some, some thinnest here. I got you. Just around You don't there. want it too bulky right there. Yeah. I got you. All right, man, so... Uh, well, some places down here have, have nasty blue cheese, like it ain't the best. I ran into it. All right, all right, Jay Shrive, so... Talk to me. Go ahead and let's start off, man. What is it exactly, what is it exactly that you do? I mean, I know you're a barber and whatnot, but mm -hmm. you're big on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, TikTok, so, you know, talk to the people, let them know what exactly you do and what got you into doing that. Oh, man, so as far as, uh, you know, social media goes, I really just started, you know, getting into that aspect of things when I started growing and uh, I guess, you know, going to these shows. Mm -hmm. So when I started going to these shows and meeting everybody who was doing things on social media, you know, I, I think it all started with, um, you know, just posting your work. Yeah. And then, you know, then it became like, you know, share some knowledge. And I think the more that and you know me, I'm kind of a troll too. So yeah. I be making funny videos. Yeah. And uh, you know, I share some knowledge. And so I'm just a little bit all over the place. I'm not like uh, one of those dudes who strictly shares, uh, um, what's it, education. I, I do it all, you know? Yeah. So out of all the content that you do, what would you feel, or what would you say is your actual favorite type of content to do? Is it, is it like the more funny stuff, the more comedic type stuff, or? Yeah, I like trolling, man. I love talking shit. I be making people, I be, I know I be pissing people off, but it's fun, you know? Yeah. And I don't do it to, I don't do it to, I just, I do it because I genuinely find things funny like that. Yeah, no, nah, I be, yeah, you I know? be. pissing people off. I, not pissing people off, but like, I just like making people laugh, I guess. Yeah. But I like sharing knowledge too and helping people out along the way, you know? Okay. So uh, I know that, where's my trimmer at? All right. So I know that you came from New York, right? Like a couple years ago, you said like two years ago? Yeah. You came from New York down here to, uh, to Houston, or the Katy area, correct? Yes. So how was that uh, transition from New York to Houston? Um, it was, uh, you know, scary, honestly. Yeah? Because um, in New York, I had a shop. I left everything Wow. to start over, so, so go ahead. So you were a shop owner out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many barbers did you have? Um, so I had one. Okay. Well, I had, I had a stylist and I had a barber, and I had one other barber who who rocked with me for a little bit, but then he went to another shop. Okay. Um. But when I left, I gave my shop to that barber. Oh, nice. And he's still there today. Okay, cool. So, what actually brought you down here to Houston, man? A new life. New life. Yeah, new life. Started over. Um, my wife, and uh, actually, you know, COVID. Okay. Two, uh, so COVID shut me down. Yeah. And uh, I used that as the opportunity to start fresh. And your wife, she's from out here? Yep, Houston. That's what's up, man. So how, how was it like just having to rebuild yourself? Because I know, like you said, you you know you had your own shop out there. Mm -hmm. How was it having to rebuild all your clientele? Because you came out here, no clients, correct? Correct. Yeah, so how, how was that, man? Because I know, I know just thinking about 
rebuilding clientele kind of stresses me out a little bit. Like it's not Hell something yeah. I want to do. So how was that for you? That was the scary part. Yeah. One of the scary parts. Um, so when I when I left, but I knew I did it once, right? So I did it once, and I knew I could do it again, and I knew I could do it faster. Yeah. Because at this time I had it, I had experience. I wasn't learning. Yeah. I mean, I'm always learning, but you know what I mean. I got you, man. So, um, so I I knew I was gonna be able to do it. Uh, and when I came, uh, a barber who who was from my area, he oh, he opened up a shop here, in, okay. in Katy, and uh, he. Um, Ironically, so we moved in with her parents. Mm -hmm. Her parents said, yo, y'all can move in with us, get on your feet, right? Yeah, do everything what you gotta do first, get on your feet. Mm -hmm. So that allowed me to build. Nice. Um, so anyway, so we moved in with them, and ironically, my boy's shop was 15 minutes away from her parents' house. Okay. So boom, I had a, uh, I had a chair yeah. in, a, in a shop, and it was a pretty established shop too. Well, what's it, what's it called? Studio 55 or? Yeah, yeah, Houston okay. 55, Kamal. Houston 55, there you go. Houston 55, my guy Kamal. Shout out to Kamal. Shout out to he Kamal. He got a beautiful man. shop over there and he, he's doing his thing. Um, so. Go ahead, go ahead. Talk, man. Talk to him. So, I was in there five days a week grinding, right? Yeah. Uh, what I noticed was a lot of the barbers weren't there on Sunday, Mondays. Yeah. So, I was in there Sunday, Monday, eating it up. Yeah, my auto walk ins. Yeah, most of the time Sunday and Mondays is, uh, you know, Barber Holiday, you know? Yeah. So I used that time to get in there and grind. And um, I was, yeah, five days a week. And then um, as I got busier, I cut it to four days. Okay. And then uh, I believe I cut it to three days a week because I was, you know, pretty busy. And you was Again, getting it those three days up. Yeah. Again, you know, um, I was and I was using Booksy too. So Booksy, you know, opens you up to just people booking. Yeah. So not only was I getting walk-ins, I was passing out cards. I, you know what I'm saying? I seen you post on your Instagram. You were like outside with a sign. Hell yeah! So I was out there standing with a sign, asking people to take my card. So that I passed out like 30 cards that day. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I was able to build pretty quick out here, out there. Yeah. Um. And so then it was, a, I think, just shy of a year, and that's when I, I opened up my studio. So speaking of that, uh, what made you decide to open up a studio and not an actual barbershop? Is it because you just didn't want to deal with everything, or? Um, so we were, so we were in a different place, right? Okay. Um, all right. So there was a few things that made me want to do the sweet thing. Because number one, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to manage nobody. Yeah. I just, did, you know, I was kind of doing that in New York, and I. I was like, you know what, I'm just going to the sweet thing. My other thing was there was still people afraid of COVID and all that. So yeah. for, for me and my, you know, mindset at the time, I was like, you know what, I could possibly get more clients for those people who are scared. Yeah. And give that one-on-one -on -one environment, right? Yeah. So boom, so there was that. Um, I would, you know, I sell, I see you rocking one of them T-shirts. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you know, I gotta show you. some love. Appreciate you. Which I was all out of XLs, bro, because I was going to grab you a couple. You good, you good. Which, are you an XL? Yeah, I'm an XL. All right. So I was going to grab some, and I, we all out. I, I get it. That's like the most, uh, Everybody be everybody's XL. using XLs, yeah. Um, so anyways, thank you. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Um, so we started making our own shirts, because I was doing this thing called drop shipping. Yeah. You familiar with that? Yeah, yeah, like uh, Printful and... Yes. Okay. So I was using that um, website, actually. Yeah. And um, everybody, because of COVID, started making their... Doing their own thing. Yeah. Figuring out how to make money. So all my orders started getting put on, you know, weeks, uh, weeks got out. got you. Yeah, it was taking forever. Yeah, so uh, so I said to my wife, I said, Leslie, we got to uh, we gotta figure this out. We got to figure out how to make our own shirts. So... That's what we started doing. We started investing in uh, printers and, uh, you know, the vinyl and, and the heat press. And we started making our own own stuff. Yeah. Um, so we needed more space for that because, again, we were at our parents' house. Ah, got you, got we you. We were working out of the uh, office, you know, long story short. We needed space for that. I'm also certified um, doing SMP. I was, was going to ask you about that. That's tight. So I haven't done any SMP jobs out here, but I did like five in New York. How, uh, 
I know that's probably not even a good question to ask, but how good would you say you were at S&P? And I say that because I ain't got no hair. I'm bald. Mm -hmm. And I've been kind of wanting to see what's up with that. Um, so I wasn't... I was, I wasn't, I'm not bad, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, yeah. I, but I, I only, like I said, I only got like five heads yeah. and like 10 melons okay. under my belt right now. Yeah. You know, maybe a little bit more melons, but you know, cause we practice on melons. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm uh, Jesse Lima and you know, Hey, well, Taylor maybe, Perry out here in these streets. Yeah, well, shit, maybe what we can do is I can probably do that and we can get some more content doing that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, I got a couple of people lined up, man. I got nice. a couple of people lined up. And, you know, so so actually, you know, you'll have to come out and check it out. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I got, got the you. suite and then we got the warehouse side where we're doing all the merch and stuff. And we, we actually got our podcast set up mm -hmm. in there, too. And then so I have another back office space where I'll be doing the S&P when I'm ready to get busy with that. Okay, and you said you had a couple people lined up. Mm -hmm. uh, have you done any out here yet, or are you not said yet? Not, not yet. Not yet. Because so I had to focus on you know rebuilding the clients. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, and keep that keep that cash flow coming to uh, pay the bills. Yeah. You know, that's the main. You know, cutting hair is my main source of income. Yeah. Um, everything else is extra. T-shirts, books. Yeah. You know, online. You know, all that stuff is extra. But yeah, so now I'm chopping two days a week. Man, you're down to two days a week. Mm -hmm. so I know originally you were... Well, I do two days a week and I do VIPs. So okay, I, you yeah, know, yeah. So VIP is, you know, anybody who wants to come off of Ben Franklin yeah. on my off day. I feel and you, and I, got, I got a nice couple of handfuls of those people. Yeah, I feel you. I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat, man. I have people who want to get me to chop them up on days that I'm off of my man. Same thing, man. Like, I'm, I'm not working today, but... For the right price. Hell yeah. You know, uh, but back to what you were saying, you were saying that uh, you had a book, you know what I'm saying? I know that you had a book come out. Uh, what was actually uh, the title of that book? Uh, the Barber Head Start. The Barber Head Start. And it's, I know. It's called uh, 28 Tips, The Barber Head Start, but it's like, it's really like 28 chapters, and okay. I put a bonus chapter in there. Okay. I seen, I seen a lot of people posting it, and I always see you reposting it. What made you decide to want to write a book? Because you know, a lot of people don't think about writing books, especially as a barber. Right. So for me, man, I was at a different point in my life where I was like, all right, how can I, how could I help people without, you know, posting a whole bunch of, I mean, I post all the time. Yeah. Tips, tricks, you know, whatever. But um, so it's like a little bit of my story, my life, and, you know, just to, to help those, help those barbers who are either, you know, coming out or you know, coming, getting out of school or even seasoned barbers, you know, yeah. who want to take it to another level or, you know, cause I've had multiple seasoned barbers actually like read it and say, bro, like, you know, I, a lot of the stuff I, I got already, cause you know, they got years in, uh -huh. but there was still stuff that they took from it. Yeah. So, you know, so for me, it was just like another way of helping people get to a new level. And or, ch or, you know, take their game to another level or help them, you know, figure something out that maybe they were struggling with. Yeah, and I think that's something big, man. Like, a lot of barbers, I feel that they need to stay willing to learn. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I, I read stuff, you know, that you post, that, that uh, Marvin Marv posts, and I'm like, man, like, I used to do this, but I stopped applying it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just sometimes it's like a refresher course exactly. hearing, hearing someone else talk, and it's just, I just feel exactly. that. Exactly, exactly. So, like, that's what I got, too. A lot of, yo, this was a nice refresher, you know, you know, bring them back, you know? Yeah. Um, maybe inspire people to, you know, or help them, help them make up their mind on, all right, I got to go for it. All right, I got to do it. Yeah. You know, whatever, like, they think is, like, not doable, it's, it's doable. Uh-huh. So, so, yeah. So, in that book, do you also uh, talk about your social media, like, uh, strategies and stuff, or that's something totally different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I go in on um, some apps and like what I do on those apps and okay. you know how I how I use them in the bonus chapter. Um, I do talk a little bit about social media, what I do post, what what I don't post anymore. Yeah. Because I used to post like you know ratchet stuff. <laughs> so, but I stopped doing that because I, like I said in the book, I, I said like I noticed people who were up and coming weren't posting that stuff mm. they were they were using social media to, to get paid yeah and so you know that's that's kind of was like all right i gotta i gotta change my approach here 
Yeah. So I talk a lot about you know that t that type of stuff too. That's what's up, man. And I know you also told me that you uh, you wanted to get back on YouTube. Yeah. I know you're big on TikTok and on Instagram. And you said you did YouTube before, but it never really like you never really spent a lot of time doing it, right? Right. I got like six videos. Yeah. So you said you're uh, ready to jump back in, huh? Yes. So me and my wife, we actually uh, we're posting more of our podcast there. Okay. Um, but what I'd like to do is kind of get into what you're doing and doing more tutorials on the Strive yeah. uh, YouTube channel. Gotcha. But uh, we have the podcast, um, which is the Metamorphosis podcast. I don't know. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen a couple. I haven't watched the whole uh, mm -hmm. episode, but I've watched the clips that y'all have on the Instagram. Okay, yeah. So Metamorphosis. So, so Metamorphosis podcast. Um, we go in, you know, more to the YouTube for that yeah. right now. Um, but what I'm looking to do, because I have more free time. Yeah. You know, my other thing is, my other thing is, bro, I got a two-year-old. You know, so, yeah, yeah. so my life has really changed um, as far as my time goes. Yeah. Because you know, how, you know, you got kids too. Yeah, yeah. So you know how it is, but I don't get the, um, the freedom or those long days that I used to get. Yeah. As far as doing whatever I wanted to do. Now my, now I, my time revolves around nap time and bedtime and Yeah, you kind of got to schedule stuff on, on, you know, their schedule, on mm -hmm. little man's schedule mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I do that because I never had that. Mm -hmm. So now I find I, that's what I'm really working on. I want to bring my kid up in the world a different way than I was. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're going harder, um, you know, with the podcast right now, but I'd like to get on your wave with teaching. Yeah. Fades. On okay. YouTube. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you already, you know, got your own your own system down with cutting and like you were saying earlier, a little bit off camera, you were telling my boy that you use the uh, the wall system a lot, right? Yeah, I like the wall clippers. But I know you're big on the uh, self-cut system. Self-cut system. I always see you posting that. Yes, I rock with them. Um, they got a nice clipper and trimmer, two, two for one, for cheap, you know? So yeah. I've been, you know, for me, I'm like... You know, uh, barbers who are seasoned, they're stuck in their own own ways, really. Yeah. But then there's other barbers who are ready to try new things. And then there's new barbers who, you know, ain't got money, ain't got a clientele. So um, I put them on to the self-cut, too. It's like, you can never have enough clippers. And uh, the, to me, the self-cuts are just like the uh, magic clip. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they're lighter and, you know, they are good clippers. They are... Uh, professional grade clippers. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. So you feel that they're professional grade clippers? Yes. Yeah, that's what's yeah. up. I've, I've never tried them out, man. I know you posted them. Uh, you posted, what was that guard that everyone was? Uh, the .5 millimeter guard, yeah. bro. Um, that was, I was like, hold up, what's this? And um, honestly, so there is no more .5 millimeters. They took them oh, all out. Oh, they took it out. Yeah, they took them all out, but who's to say that there won't be a comeback? Yeah. Who knows? I wonder why they took them out for. Um, just because, um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, the manufacturer, Yeah. They, they're going with a different manufacturer at this point. Got you. So they just dropped, um, they had the retro, and they just uh, released a whole bunch of new clippers. Um, same, same, about the same thing. Yeah. But like I said, the manufacturer is different, so yeah. that guard is no longer in there, gotcha. in the box, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's just, they did, did away with it. Yes. Got you. So, uh, so anybody who got it, got it. And that's a magic guard, man. That's it's kind of like guard. It's kind of like the uh, the OG Zero Guard and the Purple Guards. Yeah. The Andes Guards, yes, and everyone's yes, always yes. trying to get those. Wait, so they're no longer? Yet? Well, they have it, but so this is the OG like Purple Guard from Andes. Yes, yes. And then they have another one that's like, they, you got the the old, the newer the Zero? Newer ones? I think he's got it right here. The 116 or Zero? Yeah, so see, it's, it's different. Mm, it looks more it like, look a like a wall, wall one. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, got you. So it is, it's a little different. Mm hmm, mm hmm. But everyone wants this that one. That one I mean. picks up the hair more than yeah. the other joint. I feel this one's more like a, a wall zero. Yes. But I mean, it can get the job done. Mm hmm. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and jump into talking about uh, Barber Expo and stuff since, you know, Rick was on here a couple weeks back. Uh, are you going to be at the Texas Barber Expo? Uh, so is that next week? I think so, the 24th. Okay, so I was just talking to my wife or about it. The 25th, it. something like that. And I was like, you know, I think, uh, cause Rick asked me to, you know, stop out or whatever last year. Yeah. And just, you know, last year was a tough year too because of the baby. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we starting to get the, some more freedom now with him being a little bit over two, 
we're getting more freedom, um, and I can't wait to kind of get back into things. So I'm not gonna say yes, okay. but I'm not gonna say no. Okay. Um, but I'm so ready, bro, to get back into these events. And, and you know, for those young barbers who are listening or even older barbers who are listening to your channel, you know, they, they gotta get into these shows because these, these shows and these events, man, you're gonna learn some shit yeah. and, and you're gonna get inspired and it's gonna light up another fire in you to you know wanna get back behind the chair. Yeah. Because I you know, here's something that I was thinking about. It's like I feel like we all go through that um those those times where it's like, man, I I, I lost the spark or I'm tired I lost of cutting. I'm tired of cutting. Yeah. I, I don't wanna fucking go, you know, whatever. But even if you like buy some new clippers or you go and you learn some new shit, it lights up the fire to go again. Uh, to get back into it so yeah. you know that's what i do whenever i feel like i'm like in a in a rut yeah i'm gonna buy some new shit or you know i'm gonna watch some some uh youtube or because you know right now i'm not able to get to the events yeah but i can't wait to get back to the events what's the last event that you actually went to uh ct, CT? not last year not the one you was just at yeah i was yeah, yeah. i wasn't there okay um but the one the year before so the one right after COVID, or yes. well, I mean, I guess COVID yes. is the thing. Yes, and it, you know that was a great event, um, and it, I had a good time. But um, unfortunately, it wasn't in the in the cards this year. To go, yeah, I get it, man. It's it's tough, like you said, with kids and everything, and you know, I get it. And uh, you know, I did a class in Utah uh, right before CT. I did a class. You know, Fresh Fadeaway. Can't he's, say popping, that he's popping on there, but okay. he's out in Utah. He's doing a lot of uh, things for the barber industry and the beauty industry, actually. Nice. Um, but he he had me come out there and teach a class. That's tight. And um, how'd yeah. that go for you? Oh, it was fire, Utah, man. That was a vibe. You like educating? Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, that's what that's kind of what I do. I troll and educate. Yeah. You, you think that's something you would like to pursue, like be an, like an educator, not necessarily like with a company, maybe just like your own thing or? Mm, yeah, I yeah. think so. I think so. Uh, like, you know, so uh, one dream of mine is opening up a big shop. Yeah. And, you know, and then uh, teaching and molding the barbers. Gotcha. So teaching them my, my ways and how I fade. And, but I'm not one of those, I'm not one of those educators that's, you know, that that be speaking all them big words and like <laughs> you try oh, to keep it as simple as, as yeah as I, like I'm I, I'm that dude who needs it dumbed down like dumb it down to the simplest form yeah and don't tell me you know like I, the only thing I know is the occipital bone yep that and the, you know the proud ridge, ridge. <laughs> yo that's it that's all I need to know other than that I think that's let's, uh, let's keep it let's keep it simple I think that's most barbers man I'm, I'm the same way and really I'm gonna be honest with you man I don't even know. He just barely learned those words. Yeah, Sorry, you yeah. Well, all, all right. So I knew what the Prado Ridge was, but right. the occipital bone, I heard of it, but I never really knew what it was until I started watching YouTube videos. Right. And I was like, that's what that thing is called. I just call it the bump in the back of your head. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, so we on the same page, bro. Yeah. I, I, I get confused when people start using the big terminology and stuff. It's like, yo, can we just keep it simple? Everybody needs it. It's like, simple is the best way. I yeah. Think. And I think that's what's needed, man, because... And that's why I feel like I got a lot of feedback off my book. Bro, I got misspelled words in my book. Oh. I got fucking... You know what I mean? So like, it was real. It was come on, like, it's real, bro. Yeah. Like, I got so much feedback. Like, yo, people were like, yo, I felt like I was having a conversation with you. And, you know, and that's why I feel like my book actually did, did and is doing well. Yeah. So you're still doing good with that book then, huh? Yeah, nice, yeah, man. yeah. I need to copy me a copy me one, man. That's cool, because I brought you a copy, bro. That's what's up. I'm going to need you to sign it before you get it. I too. already did. Oh, okay. <laughs> you already a step ahead. Hell yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, but uh, back to what we were talking about, the expos and everything. Uh, so you said you do plan to go this one, but you're not 100% sure. Yeah, bro. Um, I was just talking to my wife about it. Yeah, it's kind of hard. I got you, man. <laughs> I didn't want to talk while you're you doing my beard. You, good, you know, you some people be talking too much around them. That, um, you know, part. we don't like that as barbers. Right. Now you good. Go ahead. Um, so, yeah. So, I want to go. I do. I just want to, you know, go show face, chop it up with people, and maybe get in and get out. Yeah. Um, but who knows? I don't know. Uh, is there an actual show that you went to before that you would like to go to again besides CT? I know CT is like one of the biggest ones. Is it like another one that you really like going to? Oh, yeah. Um, it just passed. Orlando Premier. Orlando, yeah. Uh, that was one of my favorite ones. Um, the uh, the one that's in New York City, the Jacob Javits Center, uh, IBS. 
Okay. That's a that's a mixture of you know barbering and uh, beauty. Okay. So same thing with like Premiere. Premiere is a mixture of barbering and beauty. So I like to go and get. I mean those shows. There's so many people there. Yeah. You know so many different classes going on. Um, so those two and CT, you know, is my. That's the the ones to go to. You know, and, and, well, and uh, Rick's Rick's event is good too. When yeah. I, when I went to that, I was a judge there. Oh, this nice. Probably. Uh, oh, it was before, right before COVID. Was it the one uh, that Mar was at? Yes. Yeah. So yes. That, that's the last uh, barber expo, well, the Texas barber expo that I went to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I was there. I was uh, judging, and like he had great education, and um, and you know that was I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and you know, so my other thing, man, I'm excited to get to these things because I always was drinking. Yeah. I was always getting drunk. So. Church. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm excited because I'm in a different mindset. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. As far as that goes, um, you know, whatever I'm going to take from it, I'm in a different place. No, no, no disrespect to anybody who, who loves their drinking and stuff. Because I, I, I love to drink. You know what I'm saying, my guy? My guy Wilson, over here. What's your, what's your name? Matt. Matt. My guy, Matt. Listen, I know. I know. Drink is, drink is fun. Yeah, it is. Can't enjoy life without it. I know, I know. So, uh, that that you brought that up, drinking, what made you want to stop drinking, man? I know, you know, I was going to offer you a shot because, you know, we, we like to drink here, man, but I knew I had already seen that you weren't big on drinking. So, what, what made you decide to not drink, to stop drinking in general? Um, so, all right, so boom, we kind of chopped it up a, real quick, briefly. Yeah, I got three DWIs. Um, all my, all the trouble that I've ever gotten into has consisted of me being drunk. Yeah. Um, so I'm just one of those people who I can't have. I can't have one. <laughs> who I, can? Right. <laughs> well, I can't, bro. Um, all right. So maybe sometimes I could have that one. Yeah. But it always turned into a party, man. Yeah. So and all hours of the night. One. And then you know, <laughs> then I start dabbling into some other stuff like uh -oh, okay, hitting the okay. slopes and uh, yeah, yeah, skiing and stuff, man. So uh, you know, there was other things, other other and factors. You made the right yeah, uh, that, I couldn't get off of it. Um, and you know, I was also I might have made money off the other stuff. I might have been the plug. <laughs> hypothetically. Yeah, hypothetically. This is being recorded, so you might. Very, not, very. Well, hypothetically, you hypothetically said, speaking. He might have. Might have made some money. Um, so yeah. So you know, um, uh, I had it. At, I had it at all times. And uh, yeah, so I had to get off that stuff. Yeah. I almost lost my wife because of that, man. So. And how long has it been since you actually stopped? You know, you right, got, so when was your last drink? Drink was all right. So New Year's of this year. What are we? 2022. Yeah. That made it a year. So we're over a year with no alcohol. Wow. Uh, Congrats so, to you, thank man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 2023 will be two years. And so what, you think you're better than us? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Uh, nah, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think I'm better than nobody, man. Nah, I'm just joking. Nah, um, I, just, I, just, I just saw my. Yeah, yeah, like I said, like I said earlier, man, we're toxic, bro. That's that's all. That's what the barber shop is about. It's about uh, it's about oh, having man, having fun. There was a barber in here. He quit. He went to rehab. And he came back first day back. It was his first day back there. Uh -huh. Someone gave him 50 bucks to have a shot with him. Yeah. He Did he do it? He took oh. the 50 bucks and had a shot. Yeah, he was missing for three days because he got broke out and he was on a fucking day. Wow. And right as he came back, he was like all trying to act healthy. People are all proud. Uh -huh. Next thing you know, he was on Tank's Instagram throwing up. That no dream. way. <laughs> Damn. So three how's. Three days after this. No way. We ain't heard from him since. Nah, I'm just playing. Okay, okay. <laughs> Nah, he... Is that a true story? Yes. Yeah, somewhat, yeah. Damn. Everything's true on what I said. Damn, that poor man. How do you feel after that? No, like, he loved was it. Was he sick? <laughs> he loved it. I mean, is he, is he, is he sober now or what? I, I don't know. He, he, he don't work here no more. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I feel bad, man. I feel bad just because, like, so, you know, I had a, I had a moment, man, where I was, like, in a tough spot, and I almost went and picked up a, a drink. Yeah. And I just was like, you know what? I can't do that because I got so much time without it. So, I don't want to start over. Yeah. So does your girl drink? Nah, she nah. Uh, she can. Yeah. I've, I've told her, um, you know, don't don't make me stop you. I asked her. To, I did ask her, like, it would help me. 
if she didn't. Yeah. But she don't miss the hangovers either. Yeah. So me and my hangovers, you know, I'm, uh, I think when I hit. Oh, so you had hangovers? Oh, uh, so bro. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they got worse as I got older. So they turned into two two day hangovers. Oh, wow. Um, because, so I think the last time I got drunk was when I got engaged. Yeah. Um, and it started with just so you know a couple glasses of wine, and then I drank a whole bottle of tequila and. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah. So, you know that was a two day hangover, and then I would do stupid things. So like that night, I was on somebody's live, you know, in the comments, you know, just running my mouth, not like shit talking, but just, just yeah, saying things that I wouldn't normally say. Um, kind of how we do here. <laughs> you know, but like. Yeah, but you see the thing, the key to to it is is. You gotta say the fucked up shit when you're sober. That way, no one knows. Cor what you want. Cor <laughs> correct, correct. Um, so yeah, I mean, I just, um, I was like, you know what? I would, I was just wilding out, and uh, I don't like that version of myself, man. Yeah, I get, I get it, man. What, what was your, uh, your drink of choice? Really, anything. <laughs> I'm just asking, man. I'm just asking. Anything, but uh, how did it taste? Like, what <laughs> now, see how? <laughs> so check, so check this out. So check this out. <laughs> So check this out, right? So I was a um, more a vodka guy. Okay. Va vodka, um, I did a lot of vodka. Uh, vodka Red Bull when I was out and about, or if I was home, vodka ginger ale. Um, and I was also a big fireball guy. Okay. So yeah, I uh, when, I worked, when I worked uh, with Marv, um, there was a liquor store right next door. Okay. I was always there at the end of the shift grabbing, you know, double shots. Yeah, yeah, the little and, the singles. And yeah, oh yeah. So I was getting lit before I even left work. And then I would grab either a flask or a bottle. Uh, Tito's. Yeah, okay. Tito's was my... Texas real, made, Texas made. Was my go-to. So... Uh, this is up there in New York? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Tito's was my go-to most of the time. But then I would switch it up, maybe some captain. That's where and you got your BWIs too? Yeah. Oh, they're, they're, they're strictly up there. Yeah, man. I got yeah three over there. Uh, yeah, I did uh, just, I got sentenced to 10 months. I did uh, almost eight with good time. So in that, that actually kind of changed me a little bit too, but I came out. The reason why I took the jail time was because I was like, I know me. Yeah. All my friends was partying. You I'm gonna not going to stop. Yeah. If I took five years felony probation, I would have got locked up anyways. Felony for DWI? Wow. That's Three, crazy. bro. Three. It was aggravated. You probably went yeah. to Attica. Nah, I was, uh, I was up in Saratoga County, which is oh, yeah. cupcake. They call it cupcake. Yeah, any, any, any time you can't leave when you want, ain't cupcake. Yeah. So you said, you said how many months you said? Almost eight. Eight months, okay. Just shy of eight months. Now he said, did you see any rapes? Nah, yeah, nah. Wow. Said only when you look back at nah, but yeah. So that's you stay looking forward, you won't see any. <laughs> that's right. That's You're right. Uh, so back to you were saying about, uh, you know, you said you were working with Marv out there. Yes, uh, sir. How, how'd that help you with your, you know, with the social media and career? Because I know Marv is one of the, you know, he, he's probably one of the goats when it comes to social media, man. Yeah, like he's he's always posting. That's my guy, man. He's out there. He's, uh, yeah, he's, he's very good at the social media. And um, so, you know, with, rocking with Marv, yeah. um, I was, the, you know, his, he's, got, he's got his course out there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, any, any, anybody who, who wants to get in that course, you know, you can use my promo code, jstraps25, save you 25 there you when go. you join. Um, but he, uh, I had the hands-on course. Okay. You know, we was traveling yeah. every weekend to these shows. Um, I was uh, filming a lot of his content for him. Nice. So, you know, uh, I was helping him. So you learned a lot too, just oh, yeah. filming, right? Yeah. Film, filming, you know, what people like, what people don't like, angles, all this stuff. Um, and then, you know, we were learning too when we was at these events, we were all, we were taking the classes together. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, Marv, that, you know, he's a big part of my story. Yeah. Big part of my story. And I talk about that, I talk about that in the book. Yeah. There's a chapter, you know, mentors, and he's, you know, number one on there. Nice. Um, Paying homage, sure. huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. That's my guy. Uh, I know you also went with him when he did the Barber Versus. You were his yes. model, weren't you? Yes. You were the model? How, how, how is Barber Versus behind the scenes? Kind of everyone always just sees when they're live, but how is it before and after? It's good, man. It's, it's just uh, chill vibes. Yeah, chill vibes. Yeah. Chill vibes. And, you know, we, were, we even went out and, you know, went to grab some food after. It was late. And, uh, 
we didn't even we didn't even stay for the dinner, man, because we was just hungry and tired. No, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, nah, Papito, he's um, real funny, real chill, real cool. Um, uh, Alex, Alex, oh my God, I forget his um, his his handle. His Instagram. Um, but that's that's a light skinned big boy okay, with, yeah, with yeah, a yeah. beard. I know you're always about. got like a green stripe in his beard. He's uh he's from up there too in New York, okay. where, where I'm from. Um, so he's out here doing his thing, man. He's grinding and and yeah. So Barber versus that's you know I think I thought it was fun. Yeah. 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 I, I would always watch him on the live, man. It, it looked dope. And see, yeah. I'm not a. Uh, uh, a show, what would you call it, like a battle bar? Battle type. barber, or, yeah. or Would you say you were? Nah. Nah? Nah, I did. Yeah? I battled twice. Nice. Um, how'd, that, how'd that do, uh, do I didn't for get you? no trophies, man. Oh, man. But um, the, the first time I battled, I didn't place, but um, the judge, you know, was like, yo, make sure. And, and so here's my thing with that. I don't mean to move my head. I'll just kind of move my head, and I'm sorry. You good, you good. Um, like... The first time I fucked up, bro, because I had my boy grow his hair out so long mm. that most of the time, you know, with these battles, I didn't know. But most of the time with these battles, you know, they kind of cleaned up. Yeah, they're you know? pre-cut, maybe they, like a they, week in advance. Right, they kind of pre-cut. And, and by pre-cut, I mean like not skin faded out, yeah. but like, you know, maybe cut down to a number four or yeah. a number three so that way they can have a nice easy blend, right? Yeah. So when I got there, I had a whole makeover wow. to do. And that was my thought because I was like, yo, if I got the ugliest person, yeah. I'm going to come out on top. So my man went so long without a haircut. Um, and, and, you know, and then we were supposed to get a full 60 minutes. It was a hair and beard. Yeah. So they ran behind on time. Oh, so wow. then they cut it from... I think 60 to 40. Oh, man. 20 minutes, that's a... That's a big... That's, that's yeah. For cutting hair. You they, know, when, when, a, when, when a client is late, 10 minutes, 5 minutes? Yeah. That's big, especially... I don't know how long your your sessions are, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. They're about 45 to 45 an hour. 45 minutes, yeah, right? with so, the beard an hour. Right, so somebody, you know, is 15 minutes late, that's a big... Yeah. Now you got to kick it in overdrive. Yeah. And that 15 minutes is crucial. 20 minutes is crucial. Oh, for sure. I, I would have said, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, so I had this wolf in my chair, and I had to get him right. And at this point, you know, I was only like, now I'm 12 years in, so I was only like six years in to my career, right? Yeah. Um, so, and I, you know, this is when things started getting so, um, you know, enhancements were coming out. Yeah. Um, the fades weren't just the number one on the side no more. You know, we had the burst fades. And yes. All that craziness was starting to come out. Um, so, you know, long story short, uh, the judge, one of the judges told my guy, say, yo, you tell your barber you did a, he did a crazy job on you, blah, 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 but I didn't, I didn't please. Then again, yeah. um, then again, I did my second time um, battling. I prepped, bro, for months. Ready? For months, I'm yeah. the same client. I was giving them free cuts because I just wanted to practice. Yeah. It was a pompadour competition. Okay. I was practicing styling and, you know, all that shit. Yeah, because you got to do all that in a lot of time, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, boom. So, I'm practicing months and months. Now, here's what I did. I started a timer, right? Yeah. Because I wanted I wanted to... I had my, I had my guy start a timer because I needed him to keep me on point with how much time I had. Yeah. Well, these motherfuckers, they, they shaved time off. Oh. I didn't know. I mean, I knew because I said, they're like, yeah, all right. So they was behind. Another time, you know, it got Me- behind. Yeah. So no disrespect to the barber battles and shit. You know, I think everybody now, all barbers, you know, start their own clock. So, you know, now barbers, barber shows don't really take no time from people because people have kind of figured it out, yeah. right? So anyways, so this happened to me. So I start the timer and they're like, yeah, we got 10 minutes left, 10 minutes left. And I'm like, hold up, what my timer says something different, yeah. right? So I called the judge over and I think it was um, Showtime. I think he was the judge. Okay. One of the judges or the host. And uh, what's his name from Gibbs? Um, Big Beard, um, 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 I can't remember his name. He got a big beard, he got some SMP. 
You know who I'm talking uh, about. He's loud. Um, he was with Exotics. Okay, I can't, I can't put the name. All right, anyway. But, but, yeah, yeah. Anyway, he hosting and shit. And I'm like, yo, mind you, this is my second barber battle. Yeah. And and I'm just getting into this. Like, I'm not, I know Marv, I know everybody, but I'm not, like, talking to them. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just getting started in my career as far as, you know, expos go. And uh, I'm like, yo, I got, I got X amount of time left, bro. Like, I started the clock. So I think that's what cut me out. Because mm. I had I had a fire pompadour fade yeah. in style, bro, and I think they was like, "Yo, this dude fucked everything up, man. Yeah. We ain't giving him no trophy." So I think that's what fucked me Damn, up. Damn, you that think one. it was that? Uh, they were that salty that you? I think they were salty, cause bro. You, that basically pushed everything back, huh? Yeah, yeah. I fucked up their event a little bit. Well, I mean, a little bit. I did. I threw a wrench into it. Yeah. But I mean, you that's know? their own fault, you know what I'm saying? Because if they're going to tell you you get X amount of time, you should yeah. have X amount of time. Right, especially because we paying. Yeah, yeah. You know, you paying, um, you know, the top dollar. I think I paid 150 to compete. Yeah. I want my time, you know what I mean? So, yeah. So I think, you know, I think I did get shafted for that one. Um, but whatever. I ain't mad. Yeah. I ain't mad. I'm here. That's part of my story. Yeah, no, that's good. And man. I don't think that stuff really goes on anymore, so... Things change. Things but, change. But huh? that, that's my story. That's my that's that's my story. And I ain't mad at nobody. I ain't mad at Showtime. I ain't mad at anybody. <laughs> you know, I get it. I've I've seen the behind the scenes stuff now, and I know you got you. you everybody got, got a time limit. Yeah. You say when you had that experience, when you putting out a certain product and you have a brand already. Mm -hmm. I feel like you came over here and probably built up a lot faster than a lot of new barbers would have. You know hey, turn I mean? the TV down a little bit. There's people that uh, they're still trying to. Yeah. So I guess all right. So you know, back to the rebuilding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is when you have the experience and you've already done it, you can do it again and you can do it faster. You're not gonna make the same mistakes that you made in the beginning. Um, you know, another big thing that I did, man, is I stopped cutting kids. <laughs> I don't know how you, I don't know how you feel, but I said, you know what? I'm gonna take this opportunity to not cut kids, because now, now let's not get it twisted. When I first moved here, kids, old men, walk-ins, I took anybody and everybody. They held me down, right? So, but when when I decided I was gonna up my price again, when I decided I was gonna cut my hours. When I decided I was gonna say, you know what, I'm done cutting kids because they fucking move too much, yeah. or you know they coming in with nappy heads and they can't stand it getting picked out, or you know I'm just yeah. at a different point. They're always wolfing. They're always, like, always wolfing. Yeah, most of the time. You know, and I'm like, you know what, that's not the book that I want to build again. Now, in New York, I had my kids, I and but like I I trained everybody. You train them kids. You get to know them kids. Yeah. Them kids grow in your chair, you know? I got kids. I had dudes that um, I was cutting when they was in high school because I started when I was 19. I'm 31 now. So by the time I left, I was 28, 29. I watched kids who were in high school become my friends, and I was drinking with them in the bar. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Like, you're right. Like, I watched, you know, I had another buddy who uh, I, I watched him get his first job on the radio. Um, you know, and he became the, like the night show host on the radio and stuff. And, you know, and I met him when he was like 14 years old, 13 yeah. years old. Um, you know, and lifelong, uh, lifelong clients. Yeah. So, you know, and, you know, I love kids, but at the same time I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to take a different approach here and I'm going to only build my book around, uh, adults. Yeah. And I'm going to only build my book around a certain, uh, price point. So my Okay. Hey, sit right here. So that way we can hear you a little bit on the mic. So, so you asked. So my boy Joe asked, uh, does he feel obligated to cut a VIP client's kid? Basically, like a really good client who you know been coming to you for a good amount of time. Do you feel obligated when they ask you to cut their kids or whatever? Okay. So with that, I have. Okay. So I grandfathered in the kids that I was cutting. Okay. So the the. The kids that I was cutting, I grandfathered them in. I said, you know what, y'all been supporting me since I moved here. You know, I wasn't about to say, I'm not going to cut y'all. So I grandfathered them in. 
But what I did was, the first time y'all left me hanging, which it happened, you know, and this was while I was in that shop. Okay. The other, uh, Houston 55. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you leave me hanging, you book an appointment, you leave me hanging, you either pay me, or if you don't want to pay me, I'm sorry, I can no longer cut your kid's hair. I love it. Um, and I did that. And, 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 and I fucking, I weeded them out, bro. I got a couple of kids that I cut. That's it. Um, and the they've same, grown with me. The same price point, though? I'm yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Price. Okay, so I, that was the same price point. Okay. That, 35. Um, but now they're just paying me 50, and that's my price point. Um, they just pay me 50, so they pay me 50 with the tip. Yeah. Um, gotcha, gotcha, so, gotcha. you know, I would say 35, but they hand me a 50. Yeah. Um, and they say that's a tip because they feel like, you know. It's needed. <laughs> that, right. Um, and, you know. So it's cool. Um, I, I enjoy where I'm at. I, I took that approach to take this barbering thing differently. Um, you know, my, my appointments are longer. Like yeah. when I was in New York, I was cutting everybody for so long, seven, eight years, that I was able to move my appointments 25 minutes. Yeah. Because I knew everybody's head. And they were probably coming in so frequently too that it wasn't that hard to, uh, to like, you weren't doing a transformation. Right. I was at $25 when I was in New York. Yeah. Um, and I was at $40 for haircut and beard. So I had a $25, $25 cut or $40 with the hair, hair and beard. Something like that. I think yeah. it was, or 35. Something like that. I think it was 40. I got a question. So do you feel that once you get to a certain quality on a haircut, you know, on the way you cut, does that like really just blow you up as far as word of mouth and people that are searching you out? So once you get to a certain type, you know. You know, for all the young barbers trying to get to that quality that y'all Yeah, to so, know. okay, so like, um, it don't matter how good your cuts are, right? Mm. Your cuts can be super fire, but if you don't have a good environment, Right? If, if the environment's not right when the kids come in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if it's not, if it's cursing and, and all that in front of the kids, like, that right there, you're losing money. Um, I, I do feel that. You know? Toxic shops out there. Right. And I was in them. This being one of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's cool. I was in them. Like, but, like, I knew how to uh, censor myself. Like, yeah. my shop in New York, I would be, you know, we could keep it R rated, we could keep it X rated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the same time, we knew how to go to PG-13 or PG. Yeah. When the kids came in or the moms came in. Um, so, so, you know, I think if you can switch it up to, or even if your cuts ain't that fire, but, you, but you're professional and your service is on point, like hot towel or your professionalism's on point, like you ain't gotta be that good. Yeah. Like as long as the service is there, you can charge for the service. Like, that's how I was actually building, you know, that's how I went from $12 cuts to 15 cuts, uh, to, from 15 to 25. And then, you know, from 25 to 40, because I was um, very professional and my service was, um, you know, hot towel, steamer, massager. Doing the whole nine. Right, which I don't do that no more. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> but my cut, but my, because my cuts are at a certain standard. You know, my cuts are at a certain quality, I guess. Yeah. So I don't need to go, Massage and shoulders you, and, you don't, and you don't gotta take the extra step basically. Like mm -hmm. once, you, once you give somebody a haircut and it's exactly the way they want it, your style is like their style mm -hmm. what they want. Mm -hmm. When they try to leave and they go somewhere else, that's when they realize you're their barber. Yes. That's when they realize it's gonna be a good cut, but it's not gonna be this cut. Mm hmm I've had so I've also out here and back home, I've had people back home constantly hit me up talking about bro I haven't found anybody who who cuts like you anybody who can do it like you right and that's just the, their preference yeah it's just the style you were giving right you're low paid, you're mm -hmm. you were giving them. exactly so you know like you're gonna vibe with whoever's in your chair and like my best haircut on them could be the worst haircut they ever got you know what I mean like yeah. and they might like your cut better than it's all subjective really you know to the client yeah yeah Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I, I always ask for a photo. Yeah. I say, yo, all right, do you have a photo of what you're looking for? Or do you have a photo of yourself with the haircut that you like? I, 
I think that's the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the best thing too, man. Because a lot of times we get clients, and you can back me up or you can say I'm wrong, but uh, I think like we get clients who want certain haircuts that their hair can't do. Like for mm -hmm. instance, if you came in with a picture of someone with curly hair, mm -hmm. you don't got curly hair, I, you can't get that. You can get the haircut, but it's not gonna look how the picture looks. And I think sometimes it's hard to uh, tell these people that without making them feel like, oh, I can't do the cut. Cause you tell them, oh, you can't get that hairstyle. They think, oh, you can't do the cut, mm -hmm. right? So have you had that happen to you before? Oh yeah, I've had to explain to people like, bro, your hair is straight. Yeah. Like you're not, I can give you a messy look, but you ain't getting curls. Yeah. And if you want curls, uh, you got to go get a perm. So I just had a client who just got it, went and got a perm so that he could have curly hair. Yeah. And get that, you know, that mop top that people are rocking these days. Yeah, that's what's in right now, man. It's crazy how, how much this, uh, the styles change. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, you know, as long as you know what you're talking about or, you know, uh, I kind of, you know, as long as you, you know, you're the professional, you know what you're talking about. Yeah. So whether you don't know what you're talking about or you make it sound like you know what you're talking about, <laughs> you can talk them into doing whatever you want. Yeah. I feel like the consultation is one of the most important things. And most barbers when they're starting out don't, they're not, the consultation isn't that good and they don't know to ask certain things because in their mind, mm -hmm. well, I'm going to give them this cut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Out, but it just wasn't what they were looking for. Mm-hmm, which I've had that too. Um, you know, I've had people say, you know, I was going to, you know, someone and I, I asked for this, I asked for this multiple times and they just kind of did whatever they wanted. So they appreciate the fact that I give them what they want. Yeah. Or recommend what's going to be a better look. For them. But even, so I just had a client, perfect story of this example. New guy coming into my chair. He uh, has a calic. Right? Where the hair sticks up. Yeah. Now, if you grow it to a certain point, it's going to lay down. But what he, he don't like it. And he don't want to, he don't want to um, get to, he don't want to go through that regrowth stage. Yeah. Or he don't want to put the work in to lay it down. So I, my job is to educate you on what can happen. Right? Yeah. yeah e educate, sure. educate you on, all right, if you grow your calic out, it'll lay down naturally. And technically that's, you know, what that's it what should, want. that's what it should be. What? He wanted me to cut it off. So I'm gonna cut it off. And he came back. Yeah, I think we, we get that a lot here too, man. Like, uh, the, especially like with kids. Oh, kids? Yeah, like, I'll cut it off for the kids. Yeah, the moms don't want the hair to stick up. And, I, and I, I try to tell them like, you want it to be longer, that way you can actually comb it the way you want. But nine times out of 10, they're like, can you just cut it off? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you're the client, you're right. You know, like I can just educate you, like you said, mm -hmm. tell you what I think is, is the best way to handle this situation. Mm -hmm. But after I tell you this, you still want to cut it off? Hey, let's cut it off. I'm all, I'm all for it, man. Yeah, so, so yeah, I, and I cut it off. And he been back, and he likes it. Yeah. And now I know that's what, if that's what he wants. You know, in my mind, it looks silly because he got longer. He got like longer hair. Yeah. And then we just cutting this mad short. But you know he does it. He gels his hair, so it it does lay down and it it's smooth. Oh, I don't want to move. No, you good. You good. Okay. You good. Um, but yeah, you know it looks good when he gels it. See, that's that's why having those years of experience to know when to make those calls because you know when it looks more cleaner, the the person is gonna love it. Even though they were asking for the opposite sometimes. Mm -hmm. They were asking for something different. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was just doing, you know, cutting off something that, you know, chopping it down a little bit to change the whole look of it. Mm hmm But um, what I noticed about a tank is like, we got really good at like, you know, once you get to a high level, it's like, you can uh, use the brush too or use, you know, use the that. And uh, you can start getting more high-end clients. Mm -hmm. That comes with like really being able to come in and touch somebody for the first time and give them exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. so, like, that's when you're on a high level with Barbara and like, because everybody wants to just play it safe and touch their regulars and mm -hmm. stay at their, you know, price point they're at. But when you're on there, really your price is up there and people are seeking you out, you're going to get people on a busy day coming in and it's your first time cutting them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? and, if you can oh, I always tell them, bro, the first time's always the longest. Yeah. Because I don't know your head, bro. I got to get to know your head. I got to get to know your flaws in your head. Like, I tell them, I tell everybody that I got to get to know you and I got to get to know your hair. 
I think the, uh, the third time is probably the sweet spot. Sometimes second, but I think third time is normally when you get that, man, this is exactly how we wanted it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might get lucky and get it on the first one. Mm -hmm. But I think I for sure the third one is when it's like, okay, yeah, this is it. Mm -hmm. I always tell them too, it gets faster. Yeah. Once you, it's like, and I've, I posted this on, on the gram. It's like playing a video game. The more you play the game, the better you get, right? Yeah. So the more I cut your hair, the better I'm going to get at it. That's how I kick it to them because I'm like, I might not crush it the first time. And I, just because, you know, just because I got a certain amount of followers or just because I got, you know, good uh, reviews, don't mean I'm going to get it right for you on the first try. Yeah. So, so I always just keep it, I just always uh, be honest and open to, with my clients and I feel like that's why they respect me too. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you that I just remember right now actually is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you said you've been barbering for what, 12 years, right? Mm -hmm. So I know you said also that you used to do haircuts in 20, 30 minutes or whatever. So I asked Rick this also, and it's probably going to be one of my questions that I tend to ask all these other barbers too. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the most amount of haircuts that you've done in a day, if you can remember? Uh, I think like 18, man. 18? Yeah, and that was back in the day. I'm talking around Christmas time. Yeah. Um... You know, it was uh, it was crazy, and I think, bro, like, I maybe made that was like maybe like the first time I did like a five hundred, six hundred dollar day or yeah. some shit. You know? Um, yeah. So that that um, I think it was around eighteen. Could have been twenty or something, but somewhere around there. I, you know, it was a long time ago. I was uh, maybe twenty one, twenty two. And now, uh, how many haircuts do you do? Let's say like a busy day, like when you're fully booked. What's a fully booked day to you look like now? Uh, probably eight or nine. Eight or nine. Yeah, sometimes you know ten, eleven, depending on if I get some early early cuts or late cuts. Yeah. But uh, that's a long day for me, bro. I get tired. I get it, man. But yeah, I try to keep it a. For me, I like like a six head kind of day. Yeah. That's. I feel like once you get to a certain price point, you know, you just worry about the quality. Quality and consistency. And mm -hmm. You just said that. And the price points are you've already built up your brand, so mm -hmm. you don't have to worry. You have to, you, you have to work as hard. You don't have to, you know, you've already stopped past the stage of, man, how many cuts can I do in a day? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, good. yeah, like uh, when I was at, when I was building, I was trying to get them in. I was getting them in when I was here. Like, oh, come on, I'm gonna stay late. Yeah, yeah, you like, have to. Like, I was in there 9, 8, 9 p.m. Yo, come on, bring bring your family. Yeah. Like, I would catch every, like, I would catch, I had this uh, one crew. Um, they would come in on Sundays or whatever, but they, they would go out of town and work, chopping trees down and shit. But I would do him and his whole family. Yeah. And I would stay late, but now I'm at a new price point, and I'm, I'm like, yo, I, I'm not cutting, I'm not cutting that late for, Anymore. for that, yeah, you know? I'm gonna hit you with the razor. Question, okay, I'm listening. A ask the question, I always, Joe. I always, I always not talk about four tanks, man, but I'm, I want to know the percentage of like you YouTube barbers, you know, you Instagram barbers. Mm -hmm. How many barbers can you take a clipper they never used, any clipper, any guard system, and cut it on their regular clients? How many bar? Not on a schedule. Are you working at the shop? You just get a, client, a clipper you never used before, and you just Cut your client's head with it. Like, so this just happened to me the other day, right? Um, I just grabbed a, a pair of uh, calibers. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm trying new things. I'm always trying new things. Always trying new clippers. Always trying new tech techniques. Um, stuff like that. So anyways, uh, I heard a lot about those 9 millimeters. Have you yeah. heard about them? Yeah, I've heard good things about them. Yeah, so uh, my guy Mark he told me that they, they munch munch through hair. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna use your promo code. I'm gonna grab me a pair. So I grabbed a pair and um, I, t I, uh, I gave him a shot out the box and I wasn't feeling it. I felt like I struggled, but I just adjusted them. Yeah. And then I cut, I just did a couple uh, cuts with them and I liked them, you know, they are right. But I think uh, once you, it's like getting, uh, Something like a, like a learning curve. Yeah, you gotta get to get to know it. Why, why, what shape gel is that? That's not good. Rolled up. Yeah, they send it to me. You? Yeah. Yeah. That's why. That's why I call. That's why we call him the Clipper Guru. 
Mm. Yeah. Take and you, they just be on a hot pan client and give them the same haircut. It's, it's crazy. So like, so yeah, so when I when I was using um, those, like even when I I've been using those new babyless joints, the boosts. Yeah. And I always be going. I always be turning into the uh, magic clip or the self self cut system. I always because I'm comfortable with those. Yeah. So that, that's one thing that I uh, well these guys hype me up about too. But I pride myself on man like. I learned how to use all these clippers, and I mean, obviously, all, all of them have learning curves. All of them do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just playing around, they started calling me that because it was really for YouTube, man. Like, I had to get these clippers and use them for YouTube. I mm -hmm. felt that YouTube wanted to see that content. So I didn't, I didn't do it trying to, I, I didn't want it to be a flex or to brag or, but it was just funny that I just kept buying different clippers and trying them to do reviews. Mm -hmm. And then everyone just, you know, playing around, they started saying it in my comment section. And I just, I just ran with it, you know oh, what I'm saying? Shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all a joke, but it's, That's what's up. it's cool. But some you guru, bro. Like, they, they try them out on like easy cuts, bro. This dude will try the clipper on something like on a busy day and mm -hmm. just start cutting all his clients with it. Mm hmm. And yeah, nah, I, I'm not that. He said, I'm not that guy. I'm not that yeah, barber. Yeah, to me, that's wild, like, because they're expecting a certain quality of haircut. Yeah, 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 for and sure. And then it's frustrating if it's taking you longer and it's like... Yeah, I'm going to set that clipper down if I start struggling. Yeah, like you're on a busy day. You got a schedule. And I'm like, bro, most barbers, to me, ain't going to do that. I I don't think people are going to do that on a busy scheduled day. Just grab a new pair of clippers and start cutting. But I, I do mm -hmm. that too, though, because I don't I don't stress about it, man. Like like you said, if I can't do it with this clipper, I'm just going to grab another one. I'm mm -hmm. not, I, I, I have an X amount of time that I'm like, I'm going to try this clipper out, and if it's not doing what I want it to do, I'm going to go ahead and switch. But yeah. if it's doing it, I'm going to you know, keep trying to learn it. But yeah, I think I, but you usually grab one and you just use it all day for yeah. fun, just, to, just for content, just to show the people. Like, and that's like, bro, usually you don't do it like that. It's just, well, let me try it out on somebody, and mm -hmm. turn it on somebody that's not... Paying me X amount of dollars. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. they're not like your VIP hot. Like, bro, you'll throw that shit on somebody pay you $100 for a haircut. All right, so check this out. <laughs> so check this out. We're listening. We're listening. Um, Like, I tell people, yo, I'm going to try these new clippers out, right? Yeah. I'm going to say, yo, I just got these clippers. Um, If they're brand new out the box or, um, you know, whatever. Just let me know if they're pulling. Let me know if they're they're hurting you. But I want to try them. I also tell them the price, mm. especially on if they're some babyless joints. Yeah, that, yeah. I'm gonna let you know I'm spending money on you. I'm gonna yeah. let you know I'm investing in your head, cause they need to know that. Yeah. When I say yo, these clippers, these trimmers were at 170, they're like what? You know, because they're looking at Walmart prices. Yeah, 30 bucks, 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they see a shaver at Walmart, you know, like... Um, uh, Naroko, uh, Naroko or Philips the, or whatever. Those are yeah. high price, you yeah. know, but, like, no, no clipper or trimmer. At, and, you know, even, like, self-cut. Self-cut is in Walmart and Sam's Club, and they had, like, 70 bucks. But you mm. get two for one. And those trimmers, they, those are the best trimmers you're going to get in Walmart. Yeah. But, um, you know... Uh, I tell them how much I'm spending. So if you could only use one clipper and trimmer for the rest of your barbering career, like you can't pick up another clipper, can't pick up another trimmer, mm -hmm. just one, just one. What what would it be? Doing this to me. Yeah, I just you know you know how we do, man. Okay. All right. So I gotta <laughs> go with the Babyless Gold FX. Okay. Number one, because that shit hits. The trimmers, right? The Time trimmers. The trimmers got you. The gold FX because it hits, right? Yeah. Um, and it's a. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. As much as I'd love. It's a toss up between my, my magic clip, and my my self cut. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if I had to say, if I had to choose one. And I'm just doing, I'm going to choose one just because it's going to be the magic clip. Magic clip? Yeah. Just because I've been, I just think the, I think that the self-cut clipper just got, um, it's so close to a magic clip, but it yeah. ain't, it, it ain't, still right, ain't, it's yeah. not there yet. It's almost, it will be there though. It, they working. It's I, close. Sorry. No, you good. Yeah, no, nah, I've never used the, uh. It's so light. It's. 
it's it's like uh you know that three-way mirror that you have in front yeah. and on the side they sell uh, a clipper and trimmer combo now mm -hmm. and uh these guys got a discount code for them uh, okay. and, and he said they're professional grade like they work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, i love the way they fit in my hand yeah magic clips are uh this side be this side is the uh, like janky side and mm -hmm. i kind of jacked it the other day yeah so it's, it's good it's okay. man we no, got you. you ain't gotta like Super icy, mm -hmm. uh, Nah, we're gonna try to get you as good as we can, man. That's, that's what we're here for, man. I appreciate it. But yeah, this one, this side a little bit bigger naturally than this side, mm -hmm. and I fucking, I janked it. I fucked myself up the other day. <laughs> it happens, man. Mm -hmm. It probably happened to me too, but I ain't even got no hair, so. So with the self-cut, I love how light it is. It's a, it's lighter than the Magic Clip. Yeah. And I like the the hand notches that it has. It's so far. You can take the razor underneath? Yeah. Okay. I'm never gonna cut my own hair. Ever. I don't want to deal with it. I'm not going to be in a restroom. I'm not going to be in front of the mirror. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I was a fire before I was a barber. I'm going to be a fire. Mm -hmm. See, I, I started cutting my own hair. That's how I started in high school. I don't want to cut it in the shower. I don't want hair in my no. mm hair. -hmm. It's everywhere. I hate to clean it. It gets everywhere. Yeah. You can't get it off. I don't want to be cutting hair in my restroom or anything like that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to pay just like everybody else does. And well, you know what? If you ever had to, like, if say, or we're not gonna say the c word, but if the c word ever came back, you know how to, you know how to clean yourself up. But at that time, so I was, I didn't know what the fuck it was right at, in the beginning. So and I just had a newborn. Literally, he was like two months, you know, so I, I was very cautious. Um, I, I didn't know if there was zombies walking around or whatever. So yeah, you didn't know. I talked my shit a little bit on the internet. Nobody knew. People that be like, oh, I knew, man. Right, right. And then guess what happened? I had it twice. And that's when I was like. And you caught it twice? Yeah. I got it once. The first time I didn't know I had it, my, my son had it. He had it at six months old. And uh, he was he had a fever, so we took him to uh, we took him to the ER, and they tested him, and that's when. <laughs> so so then they tested us, but they were like, you know, y'all got it. So yeah, then the second time, uh, second time, yeah, I got it, but her pops, my girl's pops, had it, and I was the only one who had it. We was both in the Oreo cookie jar or something, you know. I have no idea how we ended up with it, but. Yeah, so, um, and you know, the second time wasn't that bad, and the first time wasn't that bad. So you had it and you were good, basically. Yeah, I mean, I lost my taste, I lost yeah. my smell. Um, the second time I had the body aches and stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was very weird, it was weird stuff. And you know, the, the people who get, the people who had, you know, had it the worst, had a bad health issues. Yeah. Just like with anything yeah, that's else. What they said, yeah. And you know what? And like I said, I, I don't know if I talk about it in my book, but I said, you know, barbers who, were, who weren't doing taxes and claiming money, they didn't get no stimmy. Yeah. I got a stimmy, thank God, but you know, it wasn't what I was, it wasn't what I was making and standing behind the chair. Yeah. I didn't get a stimmy, so I was one of people. You was feeling it. That's yeah. fucked up, you know? I wish I could have hit in a vacation. I hate the way this one sprays. Was over, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yo, I'm about to get a vacation, but then I'm like, yo, all right, come on. Can we go back now? All right, it, it, I, it sounded good at first. At first, I'm like, shit, this is cool. And, but at the same time, I was like, you know, I, I didn't know what the fuck it was. Yeah. I didn't know. But, and All then right, especially, man. like I said, and then after I got got it, I was like, come on. But, uh, man, so basically, Mr. Senor Strives, quick question. Yeah, what, what does the J stand for? My first name is Jeremy. Okay, Jeremy. Okay, yeah. I, I was going to ask you that earlier, and I totally forgot. But uh, since we're ending the end of this cut, man, as y'all can see, we're finishing up. We got the enhancements, the beard trim, we got a little fade going on. I think we had a good conversation, but do you have anything that you specifically want to tell uh, anybody, your Instagram, your podcast, anything you want to tell them, man, your website, go ahead and now's your time. Let them know what you want to tell them. Okay. Uh, well, all right. So uh, any barbers who don't know who I am or want to follow me, you can follow me at J, the letter, dot, strives, S-T-R-I-V, as in Victor, E-S. Um, if you're a barber just starting out, um, trust the process. Um, you know, know that it gets easier. Know that you're going to make a lot of money. Um, 
invest in yourself, invest in your clients, invest in uh, education. Uh, if you ain't got the money to invest in education, you better be watching some uh, YouTube uh, and watching Tank, because he going he gonna to give you the education you need to help you get you there. Um, and uh, if you are a seasoned barber, keep growing, keep doing what you're doing, take everything to the next level, because that's what it's about. So. Thank yeah. you. Thank no, you. yeah, I just want to say I appreciate you, man. I think you dropped some good knowledge, some good gems for everyone watching. And uh, that's basically it, man. I appreciate you. I'm, I'm going to let you show you. I'm going to show you the mirror real quick. I can't before, wait to see my cut. But I will plug in, in my website. Uh, yeah, go ahead. jstrives.com. That's where you can pick up my book. Um, maybe we'll get a quick clip of that. I brought a copy for you. Um, and there's a $9.99 ebook. And, you know, we got some barber merch on there. And, um, yeah. Thank All right, you. man. I Check it out, man. Here's it. the cut, man. Woo! My guy. Let's go. It's been it's been a minute since I sat in another chair. Woo! I, ho Thank I hope you. I did you good, man. I hope you I did, did you great. good. Great. And what I want to know is what were you using? What was the enhancement? Oh, uh, 245 no That's drip. 245. Yeah, yeah. I it just, smelled the, it smelled a little different. Yeah, uh, it's the black brown. So That's what I use. Okay. That's what I use on myself. Oh, but I think the brown. new ones are, are different. Yeah, make sure it's tied up. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you have so, that so, exact one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I pick one up every couple okay. of weeks. Yeah, know? it was just uh, no, no drip, 245. But yeah, guys, I appreciate y'all for watching this video. If y'all like this video, please make sure to smash that like button. Also, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe one time for your boy. And that's basically it, guys. I appreciate y'all. Until next time, let's go.